What's going on everybody? This episode we're going to figure out how to connect to MongoDB from our Next.js application. Now it's nice because Next.js is ran on a backend, so we can connect to MongoDB directly. We don't have to build some Node.js backend or a Django backend and connect to that. You can build API endpoints inside of Next.js. However, it is important to note that although you might want to use these API endpoints for posting data, in many scenarios, such as when you're getting data for the static processing, you will want to use the database connection directly there versus invoking some API. So for a concrete explanation of that, we have a get static prop here where we are invoking some API. This is an external API. So it makes sense that we're invoking it here. However, when we go to develop API endpoints inside of our Next.js application directly, while it's possible to invoke those inside of getStaticProps, it's a better approach just to reuse the logic that any API may bring. So that might be a bit confusing without having already gone through creating some API endpoints, but that's what we're gonna be doing here soon. So let's go ahead and create a database inside of MongoDB Atlas, which is Mongo's cloud platform. Then we'll figure out how to connect to that from our Next.js application inside of Get Static Props. Then, probably in the upcoming episodes, we will try to create the ability to post data or create data through an API endpoint that we can invoke on button click. This would completely prevent us from having to use our Django backend that we've been using this whole time. We're basically recreating our backend with something new this time. Now we're using MongoDB and Next.js, which is going to be JavaScript, so very similar to Node.js. So with that scattered information out of the way, let's go ahead and head over to mongodb.com slash atlas slash database and we can set up a free database here go through the registration process i already have an account so i'm going to go ahead and sign in now when you get in you have the ability to create a free database now i already have a free database so i'm going to terminate this i'll let that shut down and this will allow us to create a new free database so we are going to go with the shared option which is a great way to get started and for this, I'm going to go with pretty much all the default settings, leaving it in AWS and those locations, cluster tier M0 sandbox, MongoDB5 and cluster name. I'll go ahead and name this something like customers and create cluster. So now we have the chance to set a username and password or reuse an existing account. So go in here and create a secure username and password. I recommend auto-generating your secure password. And maybe if this is some super secure stuff, giving an obscure username as well. Mine's really not, so I'm just gonna keep this pretty simple. And then I will auto-generate a secure password and I will copy that value. Let's go ahead and create that user. What we can do is paste that value just to make sure we don't forget it. And that's the account we can use logging in. So where do we want to connect from? You can connect from your current IP address. Basically, you're adding every individual IP you might use to an access list. And if it's not on that list, it's not going to work. Alternatively, you can use this 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 to say anybody can access the database, which is what I'm going to do for simplicity. And so I don't have to give out my IP address. So finish and close. Go to databases and connect. Now, we're basically going to be following this guide, how to integrate MongoDB into your Next.js app. We'll modify it a bit, but we are going to need a connection string that looks a little bit like this. So we can get that information from connecting with your application and copying this connection string. This is for the Node.js driver, which is what we will need. I will paste this value here as well, just to make sure we have it for later and we will need to substitute in our username and password. And you can put a database name in right after this slash as well, which is different than our cluster name. Now, before we start querying for data, specifically customers in our case, we will insert some data manually into the database. So head over to MongoDB, close out of this, Browse collections, add my own data, and the database name we'll call it customers, and customers for the collection name. Pretty repetitive, but right now we have a customer's cluster, a customer's database name, and a customer's collection name. But it will help us not accidentally name anything wrong, and we'll go ahead and create. And MongoDB is going to be organized into collections, which are kind of like tables, and then each one of these are the rows in our table. However, MongoDB doesn't use that terminology. Instead, these are known as documents, and you can think of them as JSON objects, or very similar to JSON objects. So what we can do is insert a document and define key value pairs for this document. 
you can think of this as an object in JavaScript. So we could have the name, and this could be John Smith, and that's going to be a string. And then we'll add one below this, add a field after name. This is going to be the industry, and he was in the restaurant business, also a string. You can see some of the other data types there if interested, though. Let's go ahead and insert this data. And there we go, we have our first customer. Let's go ahead and add another customer. Same exact concept, name, Sal Brown. And let's say she is in the industry of investing. I don't know. And insert, this allows us to understand NoSQL because the fields are repeated for each individual document and can be customized. So not every document has to follow the same structure. So you can see name is in here twice, once for each document. With MongoDB, you could customize one of these if you wished and actually add in some field after this. And this could even be a nested type. We could make this an array and then we could have multiple values inside of this array. And none of the structure has to be the same for the other object. So let's go ahead and cancel. We're not going to need that right now. Now that we have our data in the database, we can try to query for it. Inside of our code, we will say npm install MongoDB. And let's go ahead and work from our page for all of the customers. So that'll be the index file inside of the customers folder. And inside of here, we have a get static props, which will request for all of the customers. Let's try to replace this with a query to MongoDB. So we'll say import Mongo client from MongoDB, perfect. Now, inside of get static props, we'll say const Mongo client is a new Mongo client and we'll pass in the connection string here. Let's go ahead and copy this password and replace that here. And we will replace the username as well, right there. And then the database we are trying to connect to is customers. Let's go ahead and copy this now, and we will paste that value inside of quotes here, just fixing the formatting so it's all on a single line. That is better. And now we should have Mongo client, which we can use down here. So we are going to say Mongo client dot DB. And here you could pass what database to use if you needed to work with multiple databases, but we are just working with one. So I just put that in directly in the connection string. Since we'll never really be using a different one, we can just leave DB without anything passed in and then say dot collection, passing in the collection name customers. Now, after this, you can invoke the find method, and we want everything. We'll just pass in an empty object here, although I'm not sure if that's required. Maybe we can test it in a second. And then dot to array. So that's going to return a promise and ultimately give us the data. So what we'll do is we'll say const data is await all of that stuff. So pretty intense. And then all we can do now is say console log and we will just put the data here with some exclamation marks so I can find it pretty easily. Now we'll say npm run dev. And now when we make a request to this web page, do a refresh, we can see that data in our database. This is not what we were looking for. That is coming from this earlier request down here. Instead, what we were looking for is this data right here. We have Sal Brown and in investing with a new object ID and John Smith in the restaurant industry with a new object ID. And there's our exclamation marks if we needed to search for it, but we found it pretty easy. Now I'm just checking if we need to pass in anything to dot find or if I uh, assumed such a thing. So let's go ahead and refresh. And it seems to work fine without that. So no object passed in is fine. Now what we can do is we can return the new customer data down here inside of our props customers. However, we're going to have to make some modifications now because of this new object ID. It's not going to adhere to our existing type. So for this, let's go take a look at our customer definition, just right up here. We can change this here from number to object ID, which will actually be a type we can import from 
MongoDB, so object ID. So far so good, and what that means is our new data will adhere to the customer type, which is what we are expecting down here in GetStaticProps for us to display this data. Now we are going to need to change actually the name, you see it's underscore ID, so let's go ahead and go up here and add an underscore to the ID. And now down in here when we invoke dot underscore ID, we're actually going to need to say dot to string as dot ID is an object type. And similarly here for the div key, we can just say customer dot ID with an underscore dot to string. That should be good so far. And now what we can do is we can use this new data to return inside of the props. So let's go ahead and comment out this for a moment. And what do we want to put here? Well, let's take a look at our data object that we printed. It is an array and there is no property on it called customers. So we can just use it directly by saying customers is data. Let's save that take a look at our page to make sure we're not completely insane. Oh. Now this problem where it says cannot be serialized as JSON is not unique to me. In fact, in the Next.js guide on MongoDB, they show how to fix this, which is to use JSON parse, json.stringify. And there is a GitHub issue open discussing this. And inside of here, there are people having the same problem with Mongoose, which is an object mapper many people will use for Node and MongoDB. So we can fix that same problem by passing it through these two functions. So let's head over to where we are saying customers is data and say json.stringify passing in data and then json parse this entire thing. So json.parse passing in json.stringify of data. Hopefully this do the trick. We'll save, check out our site, and visiting all the customers, you can see we are now getting our new customers from our MongoDB database. Yay! There you go, you got a basic connection to MongoDB going. You can learn more from here. And we're going to continue this process in the next video, so hopefully if you've enjoyed this, you'll enjoy the next video as well. Definitely don't be a weak loser. Instead, subscribe to this channel and benefit from the massive amount of knowledge that I'm just delivering you for free.